rise and shine YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about the most expensive mouse that I have in my collection. Yes, it is the Viper Mini Wireless Signature Edition. This guy right here. Giant holes, magnesium alloy, 49 grams. And we're going to talk about whether or not you should buy it. If you should spend the $300 or not. So, strap in and let's get to work. Alrighty, YouTube. What you see before you is probably the most expensive box that you can buy from Razer when they have it in stock. Now, right off the back, this mouse comes in drops, right? I just got their recent one. And they will notify you through email if there is going to be a drop soon and when it will be. This is the Razer Viper Mini Singer Edition. Right off the back, you can tell this box is going to be pretty, pretty enjoyable when it comes to the unboxing, and that's what we're going to do. So you flip this up, and right here, you actually have this guy. So this is a nice little, um, like a statement, right? This isn't really a thank you card. This is a thank you for giving us your liver, right? Because this mouse is way too expensive for what it is. And inside that box, well... You have another box, and this is a leather, nice, secure, you can tell from the lock. Like, this thing is hefty, and it does feel very premium. And, well, that contributes to the $300 price tag right there. And inside, you have the one, the only, Viper Mini Signature Edition. Now, it is the, is it the Viper Mini Signature Edition that we were hoping for? No, no, not exactly. It's, it's, uh, it's a little out there in left field when it comes to the aesthetic kind of choices they tried to make right here. Like, I mean, you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll just leave it like that. Um, under this, you get your accessory little box. You get in there, you get the accessories, you know, logo, right? This guy right here it says accessories, so you know what you're getting, right? And in there, you get your manual, and you get your alcohol prepad for when you change the skates. You got some grips, and you got extra PTFE and glass skates. Now, these glass skates, right, I have used them. That's why they're not exactly in place. You can see that there's fingerprints on them, blah, blah, blah. But these guys are phenomenal right these guys are very very smooth very fast they're made of gorilla glass they're very durable they're scratch proof all that i don't actually know if they're like scratch scratch proof but they're pretty damn good because man i tell you what i had a rough time taking them off of the uh middle skate but there's no scratches on it and they're perfectly fine afterwards so that is something to be said there here you got your cords ak hertz compatible dongle that obviously contributes to the 300 dollars price point there you go little unboxing experience for you guys who don't want to spend an arm and a leg for a mouse which kudos to you you're smart i got this guy because i was bored and while the drop came in, I was like, you know what? Let's get this. Let's try it out. Let's review it. You know, I have small hands and I might as well get it out there on the channel. Shape. I love the Viper Mini shape. Right off the rip. It feels good in hand, except there's a very, there's something that I just do not like, which it's in the outer flares. I think that is the only thing shape wise that I don't like on the Viper Mini anymore because I've used many other mice since the OG Viper Mini that is just it's something that doesn't feel natural to me anymore now that's all going to come down to how you grip the mouse I have 16 by 9 hands so I have small Fortnite fingers and how I grip it right is basically if I'm were to use it in game this is how I would use it right here the ring finger is on that outer flare and the thumb sits right in the middle right here and it kind of rests right where the outer flare starts to protrude. It is what it is. When you fingertip it, you don't really feel any of that because, well, your finger placement is going to be different when you fingertip. And 
when it comes to claw grip, well, claw grip, I think the only issue you're going to have, right? It's a terrible, terrible claw, claw grip. But the only issue you're going to have is personal preference on those holes. You will feel the holes when you claw grip this mouse. So all in all, I think this mouse is going to fit fingertip users more than like a relaxed fingertip or claw gripper to a aggressive claw. But I think fingertip is going to be the way to go. And when it comes to the holes, you're either going to feel them or you're not going to feel them, depending on your grip style. Fingertip, you don't feel them. Claw and relax, you feel them a little bit, but they're not annoying and it's not going to be something that's going to turn you off of the mouse. I can tell you right now, it's when I used it in game, I wasn't I wasn't too worried about the holes. You know, I really didn't even notice them because I'm not focused on like feeling the shape, right? I'm not focused on the holes. I'm focused on my performance in game. When it comes to the clicks, M1, M2 are nice and crispy. Very, very little to no pre-travel or post-travel. Side buttons are nice and clicky. Nice and like you can really actuate these pretty quick because they're nice and soft. They're not super stiff. And the only thing is with me is the scroll wheel. I find the scroll wheel to be just a little bit stiff to my liking. Whereas something like the new X2s, the V2 versions, this is probably one of the better scroll wheels on the market that I've ever used, to be honest with you. And this isn't me being biased. I think that genuinely my personal feel on this scroll wheel is it's my favorite. It's super soft, super, super smooth. It just feels really good compared to the Viper Mini, where it's a little more stiff. Um, but you do feel the each and individual step, right? And it is pretty spammable when you click it down. Not as much as the X2, but it's pretty good overall. The skate design on this guy is going to be four mini skates, one in the middle. Um, like I said before, the middle skate, if you use glass, is going to be pretty hard to get out. So be careful with that one. And the PTFE skates, they are skates, no, the skates that you get with the mouse are pretty damn good, right? They're not bad at all. I have the Ice V2s on here and on glass, these things feel phenomenal, okay? They feel really damn good. So overall, if you are a Viper Mini enthusiast and you are looking for that shape, I mean, go for it, right? Save up the money, be responsible. Don't be like me, don't be bored, okay? Be responsible, and if you have the money, pick this guy up, because it's probably gonna be your end game mouse. Like I'm saying here, if you have small hands like me and you're looking for a Viper Mini shape, this is the Viper Mini shape that you're looking for, right here, because it is the Viper Mini. When it comes to the price though, I mean, yeah, it is $300, and I do not think that this is $300 worthy. That's that's just gonna be subjective per user, right? But personally, it's I don't think it's $300 worthy, right? Last, we're gonna talk about the polling hertz, right? You get the 8K hertz dongle with this, right? The newer batches, you won't have to worry about updating any of the firmwares because these are all already updated for you. And it works pretty damn good out of the box. You plug it in and it goes. Now you will need to use Synapse, right? Which is everybody's downside because Synapse is very intrusive, right? It's, it's very resource heavy on your PC. I mean, I don't like having so many things open on my PC because I stream on one PC and I'm gaming on one PC. So it's rough when you are somebody that has very limited things. And if you are a person that has a lower end PC, 8K Hertz might not even work for you. There you go. If you have a lower end CPU, you might have more issues than me. I have a 13900K. And well, I mean, Apex Legends had the worst 8K feeling hertz thing that I've ever used. When it comes to the 4K, 2K, 1K, Apex worked perfectly fine. But did it change how I performed? No, right? I per performed the same on 4K as if I did 1K. And to me, I don't take 4K the whole 4k hype into a like option of buying a mouse 
because all I'm worried about is if the shape is going to work for me. That's literally it. If the shape works, that's fine. Weight does come into play with me. I mean, this is 49 grams. This is lightweight. You will have no issues with this. When it comes to me personally, weight comes into play depending on the shape. Because if you have a small mouse and it's very heavy, it's going to feel even heavier than a large mouse that has the same weight because of how the weight is compacted in that small shape. When it came to the Cobra Pro at 77 grams, that felt like a giant massive piece of shit, okay? When it comes to the Viper Mini Signature Edition, this feels like a phenomenal lightweight performer, okay? It feels very good. It feels very good to use. It's just not going to be my main just based on the shape alone. I'm not a huge Viper Mini shape guy anymore since I've used so many others on the market. And it is what it is, right? Gaming is all preference. Using a mouse is all preference. Um, I've seen smaller handed people main the GPX. I mean, it is what it is, right? If they play really good on that mouse, they play really good on the mouse. There you go. So that's it. That's the Viper Mini Signature Edition review right here. And if you got it to this far, hit that like, subscribe to the channel. We got a lot more mice that we're going to be testing down the road. So be there or be square. <laughs> you know what I mean? But rise up. God bless. See you for the next one. And we're out of here.